Hi, this is Diane Love to Bake. And what we're going to make is a chocolate chip pie crust. This particular pie crust, well, it can be used for so many different things. Um, I make it and then I fill it with chocolate pudding uh, and cover it with uh, uh, whipped cream. I also make the uh, pie crust and uh, fill it with ice cream. Uh, and chocolate syrup. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And I'm going to put uh, another uh, recipe video on uh, showing you uh, just some of the uses that this pie crust uh, can give you. But this is going to be just the video solely on chocolate chip pie crust. What's also nice about it, if you're looking for a recipe with no eggs, this is the one for you. Now, uh, it is made with solid shortening, so if you're not a fan of this, well, maybe this isn't the recipe for you, but it is a good one. So let's get started. We're going to start off with two cups of the solid shortening, okay? And I'm going to grab um, a spatula that I didn't have ready. So I'm going to put that in my mixer. You know, you really... Um, you can do this with a hand mixer, uh, but it, it's a little bit harder. I think the stand-up is going to make it a lot easier for you if you have a stand-up. So I'm just going to cream and break up the shortening. Now once you do that, you're going to be needing um, a cup of powdered sugar. So I'm going to cream the shortening and the powdered sugar together just till it's combined and then just with my spatula I'm going to clean up those sides and get to the bottom and bring that together of the sugar and the shortening Now once you do that, the next thing that you're going to be putting in is vanilla. I would suggest at least a tablespoon. If you find that the, um, the mix is too dry, you might have to add a little bit at a time. You know, a quarter of a teaspoon or that type of thing. You really can't go wrong uh, unless you, you know, put the whole bottle in or something like that. And I'm sure you're not going to do that, okay? So I'm going to put a tablespoon of that in now. combined that it, it looks like frosting okay all right now again you might need more vanilla as we go along so you're going to use your good judgment on that okay the next thing that you're going to be putting in is four and a half cups of all-purpose flour that's a lot of dry ingredient and that's why another reason why you know I tend to use a little bit more of um, of the of the flour I'm also going to be putting in a teaspoon of salt, which I'm going to put just in the flour, grab a spoon, and just combine that together. And then a little at a time, I'm going to just keep, you know, mixing this. Now you want to keep mixing it till it forms a cookie ball, or if it doesn't do that, where you, when you push it together uh, in the palms of your hand, it'll make, you know, a ball, that it will come together. So let's do that. Put, start to put this flour in. And again, just do a little at a time because you don't want flour all over your kitchen. I'm going to raise my speed a little. Okay, at this point it starts to look extremely dry. Uh, you're going to get, you know, just like little gobules of, of it, but stay with it. You haven't done anything wrong. Alright, that's the end of the flour. 
and stay with this, like I said, till it starts to really come together. And you know, that could take you two minutes, it could take you four minutes. It really depends on the speed and how, how you want to do it. Now, I'll pull and try to show you what I was talking about of, you know, looking crumbly uh, in your hands. Um, it really has to so that the dry is combining with uh, the shortening, basically. And then again, you know, just make sure, clean the sides of your bowl, get to the bottom because there is a lot of dry ingredient in this that's got to really come together. So let's beat it a little bit longer. Okay, I just actually test it with my hands like that and you can see how it is coming together, okay? If it still seems a little dry to you, then this is when to put a little bit more vanilla in. So I put a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla in. And because of that, then you can all see these individual globules, like I said, okay? And then when you press them together, there you go. You can see that you have a you have a dough. Okay, so this looks good. So I'm just going to take my paddle off here and take the excess off. Okay, this is what you know. It seems maybe a little bit of a messy recipe, but it's well worth your time. Um, it really bakes up quite nice, and it tastes really good. Okay, so again, I'm just going to clean the sides and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. Just want to make sure to get to the bottom here. Okay. Okay, and I don't know if you can see it, but it does. It looks very crumbly, doesn't it? Okay, and then with my clean hands, I'm just going to bring it together here. Okay, and then I'm going to just put it in a nice, a nice ball. Now, I generally get about three pie crusts out of it, usually like a nine inch pie crust. And then there's, you know, there's, there's one of your balls, cookie balls there. Let's do another one here to get the idea. Okay. All right. I usually make them even a little bit bigger, but I want to move it along for the video. Okay. And then, if, you know, if you just want to make them bigger, use it up, put it back in your bowl and just bring it together like that, okay? Like I said, it, you know, it, it takes a little bit of patience because it's, you know, it's a little bit messy. But it's almost therapeutic, really, because it reminds me of, you know, when you were kids and you worked with Play-Doh and formed and made different shapes and whatever. So we're gonna get rid of the mixer here. Okay, then of course, you're going to need a pie, pie plate or pan. Okay, now here I just wanna show you, this is a little bit smaller of a uh, container here. Okay, and then I actually just break it up again, believe it or not. Now you don't want this pie crust to be, you know, too thick, but you want to be able to bring it up to the, to the edges. Okay, and you can see that again, it's, it's sort of 
just taking the time and pulling it together with your fingers. Now, you might say, well, what if I don't want to make a pie? What if I want to make some, you know, out of a square pan? You know, um, you know, an eight by eight or something like that. Well, you know, feel free. That's no problem with that. Now, you're going to um, bake this at 375 degrees. Now, if you're uh, making one like this, you know, it could take you 12 to 15 minutes. If you're doing a, um, you know, a 10 inch, I've had um, some that have taken me, you know, 15 to 18 minutes. If it's, if it's bigger than that, it might take you up to 22 minutes. What you're going to do, though, is you're going to just keep watching it that you're not burning um, the, uh, the pie crust and that, you know, it's, that it's, it's baking. It's being cooked or baked, I should say, okay? All right. Now, if you find after you do this that it's just still too dry a little bit, add a little bit of uh, vanilla, okay? And then just with my knife, I'm gonna kind of just bring the edges in a little bit so they don't look so ragged. the idea okay 375 then you know use the back of your hands here and your palm and your fingers so that you get the sides all in and the bottom okay like that and then put that in your oven and like I said it really can take various amount of time it's really going to be up to you of how large, um, you know, the pie plate that, that you're going to that you're going to use. Okay, so let me rinse my hands real quick because I want to show you what one looks like when it's baked up. Okay. Okay, and this is exactly how it's going to come out. Here's another, uh, I did this in, um, a, you know, a different type of pie plate. This is quite a big one. This one, I think, is um, about a 10 inch. Um, and again, you, you know, you can fill this uh, with uh, mousse. You can fill it with pudding, ice cream. Uh, there's just so many uses uh, for this. Uh, it, it's just a great tasting um pie crust and it's chocolate chip i just realized i forgot to add my my chocolate chips uh to it i am so sorry I do apologize um what i have using is one cup of the chocolate chips again if you want the base just plain and not put the chocolate chips in well then you got a great pie crust cookie pie crust without the uh, morsels. I'm using actually espresso, which is a dark chocolate. One cup, mix it in, uh, into it, and then of course in, in the mixer, don't be too long, so you don't want to break them up, and then just press it in, okay? And um, I'm just going to be honest with you, I'm going to just put some of these on the top and just press them in a little bit here. Okay, or I can better yet just take it all apart and mix it um, by hand and put it back in again. So you can see you can just, you know, do a, quite a bit with this because uh, you're working with uh, a dough that works much like, well, like I said, the, uh, the stuff that the kids uh, uh, play with, okay? And even a mistake that I did, I can put that all back in my mixing bowl. The rest of the cookie balls. Add the rest of the morsels, either by using my clean hands or put my paddle back in and mix it. You've got 
the chocolate chip pie crust. Uh, this recipe, as I said, it's a little bit messy to do, and i um, sorry that I forgot to put those morsels in, but um, bake it up, give it a try. If you try this recipe and you like it, we'll leave a comment because I'd really like to hear from you. Also, if you would like the recipe, I'd appreciate a like. I'd also appreciate for you to know that all my videos are on YouTube only and solely on YouTube. Uh, there are many of us that have these videos and the monies that we do make by you watching these videos well, I buy product with it. And then the uh, bake items or whatever I'm cooking or baking, I give it away to charity. So when you watch my videos on YouTube, I'm taking that financial support and turning it in buying more product uh, to make more product and to be able to make more videos. Uh, I really appreciate you watching Diane Love to Bake uh, with 12,000 or more subscribers. I thank each and one of you that have taken the time to, uh, you know, click on the channel or write to me or give me a like or maybe even a dislike. But I appreciate every one of my viewers. Uh, so please uh, find my videos and please know, well, pinning or posting or copying. I know it's going to happen, that's for sure, but I can at least ask, right? So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching Diane Love to Bake on YouTube. I'll see you soon.